There's a Jersey comic we want you to meet. You might have seen Chris Gethard already on Inside Amy Schumer and Don't Think Twice, but you don't know him, not like this. Here's Maddie Orton with NJ Arts. So let's talk about your show, Chris Gethard, Career Suicide. You know, it strikes me, and it seems to be striking a lot of people that uh, suicide and clinical depression may not be the most obvious yeah. subject matter for a one-man show that is a comedy. Yeah. Um, what made you think this is something that'll keep people entertained and laughing for 90 minutes? Well, a lot of it was, I had a conversation with my friend Mike Birbiglia, mm -hmm. who is, he's a great comic, and he asked me just as a friend, like, what's the deal with all that stuff? Like, I, I, I joked about it a little bit here and there in my work, and, and I told him some of the real stories, and he was like, that's hilarious, and I was like, this is not <laughs> at all hilarious, and he, but he was like, dude, if you, if you can, if you can make that funny, you have something really special on your hands. One of the couples, sits here on the bench. The other couple <laughs> sits here on the bench. And no one mentions the crying 32-year-old man who's also on the bench. I also should be clear, I agree that suicide is not a funny thing, depression isn't either. This is not like me making like jokes about those things. It's, right. I've lived through um, a lot of experiences with that stuff and it's me speaking really honestly as someone who's been on the inside of some of those experiences. And, I kind of feel like if I can get people to come in and just laugh at this as a comedy show and then maybe let their guards down a little bit about how um, stigmatized this stuff can be or how hard this conversation can be to have, that would be a very nice byproduct of being a comedian. I mean, you talk about speaking frankly, you speak very frankly. I think people are potentially <laughs> comfortable saying, you know, I've battled with this, I've battled mm -hmm. with bouts of that. But I mean, you go into a level of detail <laughs> that I respect, but I gotta tell you, I thought, oh my God, his mom is watching this. Yes. These strangers are all here. Yeah. How did that feel the first time getting up here in, in a theater that looks very much like a comfortable living room yeah. or somebody's parents' basement and being really intimate with these strangers for a period of time? It was scary. Like I started workshopping this show about two years ago and I remember probably like the first six to ten times I would do the show, I'd get off stage and be shaking and just be like, what am I doing? Like, why would I do that? But um, it, a lot of it was the encouragement of people who, who would reach out and say like, hey, I, I identified with that. What do you say to people when they come to you after the show and say, Chris, I heard this, it, I relate to it? Um, and that happens a lot, right? It does. It happens more often than not when I do this show. Um, people will wait and tell me the story and I'm very flattered by that. I'm also very upfront with them of like, hey, I'm a comedian and I can't solve your problems for you, but I hope maybe this show, you know, spurs you on in some way to, to seek your own help. A lot of the focus in the show is about the stigmatization of medication, of seeing a therapist. You talk about uh, medications for mental illness being the one medication that people can say, why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. When I was... 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, I really resisted medication because people would outright say like, that's fake, that's quackery, hmm. who needs that? It's medicine, I avoided taking medicine because other people had these opinions. And I think especially as um, a creative person, there's like this, you know, especially a comedian, there's like this sad clown thing of like, oh, you kind of have to be dark and brooding hmm. to be funny and I bought into that and resisted getting help for a while, and man, was that not smart. No, like, especially where I grew up, like, North Jersey, you tell someone you're going to see a shrink, they're like, what, like, why? Like, you get to fix your life up, why? You deserve to be so happy, what? You think you're fucking better than me? Like, true or false, that's where we grew up, right? You mentioned Jersey, I think we're like sitting on a map of New Jersey Yeah, right now? you've picked up on that. Many, that many right? people don't even realize it's a map. I think this is 287. Look somewhere? at that, wow. Right, Look at that. am I right? This map, this backdrop is positioned in a way where for a lot of the show, um, New Brunswick is over my right shoulder and West Orange is up here. My whole life, I've been all about Jersey. I went to Rutgers. I worked for years at Weird New Jersey Magazine, which That's is like right. the coolest job I've ever had. And as an artist, I thank God I'm from Jersey because I think it puts such a chip on my shoulder. And I also think there's a little bit, being from Jersey, there is also a little bit of like, oh, you're going to be an artist, which is like, if you're going to do it, you need to go hard. So it made me fight really hard for it. And I always love that. Chris Gethard, career suicide, is now running at the Lynn Redgrave Theater in Manhattan. I'm Maddie Orton, NJTV News.